side angle side congruence. It's called SAS. And we're going to construct triangles using SAS. This is 4.5B. We have a 4.5A that if you missed it, it's in the geometry playlist in the description. So we learned this in the last video. An included angle is an angle formed by two adjacent sides. The adjacent sides are segment AB and segment AC. The included angle is in orange and it's between them. And it can be shown that only two pairs of congruent corresponding sides are needed to prove the congruence of two triangles if the included angles are also congruent. So that brings us to the side angle side SAS congruence postulate, which says if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So we can see triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EFD. They have congruent sides and between them they have a congruent angle. Now this picture shows the cross brace supports for a scaffold. We can use SAS to explain why triangle KPN is congruent to triangle LPM. So let's take a closer look at the scaffold. We can see the congruent segments, okay, and they both share P, don't they? So it's given that segment KP is congruent to LP. We see that one congruent mark. And that segment NP is congruent to segment MP. We can see the two congruent marks. By the vertical angles theorem, angle KPN is congruent to angle LPM. So we've got our included angles right there in the middle. KPN is congruent to LPM. See? Therefore, if those two angles are congruent, triangle KPN is congruent to triangle LPM by side angle side. You can see we've got a congruent side, a congruent angle, and a congruent side, side angle side. Okay? And take a look at these two triangles. We've got segment AB is congruent to segment DF. We can see the one congruent line. And we can see that angle B is congruent to angle F, and that segment BC is congruent to segment FE. The letters SAS are written in this order because the congruent included angles must be between pairs of congruent corresponding sides. The angle must be formed by the sides. The included angle is named by the letter that the segments share. So this is angle B because it's the side is AB and this side is BC. This is angle F as the included side because we got segment DF and segment FE. See, they share. The SAS postulate guarantees that if we are given the length of two sides and the measure of the included angle, we can construct one and only one triangle. And the SSS and SAS congruence postulates are shortcuts to verifying all six corresponding parts congruent. And take a look at these two triangles. In this first one, we've got a 10 centimeter segment and a 40 degree angle and a 7 centimeter segment. And look at this one. We've got a 10 centimeter segment and a 7 centimeter segment and a 40 degree angle. But Triangle ABC is not congruent to triangle DEF because the 40 degree angle needs to be between the 10 centimeter segment and the 7 centimeter segment. Okay? So the order is very important. All right? So we can construct congruent triangles by using side angle side. First thing we're going to do is use a straight edge to draw two segments and one angle from, or we could use two segments and an angle from a given triangle, okay? So in this case, I just drew two segments of different lengths and I made an angle. So now what we're going to do is construct segment AB, this purple one, congruent to one of the segments by measuring the compass and making an arc. So I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to go like this and I'm going to measure that segment. Then I'm going to draw a line I'm going to put point A here, and I'm going to put an arc and mark that as point B. Now I'm going to construct angle A 
congruent to that given angle. We learned how to do that in video 1.3. And you can go back into the geometry playlist and watch that if you missed it, but I'm gonna cover it quickly right now. So I moved it down to here, because that was kind of far away. So here it is, okay? We're gonna try to copy this angle. So the first thing we do is we make an arc on the original angle, okay? So I just went like this, and I put this at the point, and I made an arc. And then I went to the line that we just made with our B and I made the same arc. Then I labeled this as D and this is E. So that's going to be D and that's going to be E. And what I did was I measured from D to E with my compass and I put this on E and made an arc. So that ended up being D where that intersection is. Okay. Now I can draw a segment from A through that intersection so we can make this blue one up here, okay? So we can construct AC. What we do is we take our compass, we measure the blue one, the other segment, and where this is set, we put this at A and we put a mark, an arc, and mark that is C, okay? A lot of marks on this, isn't there? So, now we've got A and C and B. We only needed this to make the angle. So we're done with this part, but we can draw from C to B to complete the triangle and we've constructed triangle ABC, all right? That was confusing, just rewind and watch that section again, okay? But you should really be familiar with making congruent angles at this point, okay? Because we're gonna be doing a lot of this stuff and if you already know how to do it and you remember it, it's easier to make the more complicated stuff. So we learned the SSS, that side, side, side postulate in video 4.5a, the last video, which states, if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, well, then the triangles are congruent. And we can verify triangle congruence by showing they are congruent for the given value of the variable. So we have a given up here that triangle UVW is congruent to triangle YXZ and that X is equal to 3. We've got these two triangles, and if we look at the diagram, we know they're congruent. It just looks like this one turned, didn't it? It rotated into that position. So we've got that ZY is equal to X minus 1 right here. We know X is 3. So that means it's 3 minus 1, which means it's a 2. We know xz is an x. Well, we know x is 3, so that's 3. And we've got xy is 3x minus 5. Well, x is 3, so that's 3 times 3 minus 5. That's 9 minus 5. That's a 4. So now we've got a 2, a 3, and a 4, just like we did in this one. See? That's got 2, 3, and 4. So we know uv is congruent to yx. This one is congruent to this one. We know VW is congruent to XZ. So VW is congruent to XZ. And we know UW, this little one here, is congruent to YZ. Okay? So we've got three sides that are congruent. So triangle UVW is congruent to triangle YXZ by side, 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 all right? Now we have two more triangles. Let's take a look at this diagram. This one says this side is 15, that angle is 126, and that side is 24. And this one said this side is 2y plus 1, this angle is 12y plus 42, and then the other side is y squared minus 4y plus 3. What's well, telling us up here that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle G J, G, H. And it's also telling us that Y equals 7. So we could put that 7 in place of the Y, can't we? So J, G right here is a 2Y plus 1, which means it's 2 times 7 plus 1. That's 14 plus 1, so that's a 15. And G, H is Y squared minus 4Y plus 3 over here. And we can put the 7 in as a 7 squared minus 4 times 7 plus 3. We get 49 minus 28 plus 3. Remember your order of operations. We've got to go from left to right when we're doing the addition and subtraction. We can't do 28 plus 3 first and then subtract it from 49. We'll get the wrong answer. So we do 49 minus 28, which is a 21, 
Now we add the 3, we get a 24, okay? And the measure of angle G is 12Y plus 42. We put the 7 in for the Y and we get 12 times 7, which is 84 plus 42. We get 126 degrees. So it ended up with the 15, the 126 degrees, and the 24, just like DEF, didn't it? So segment DE is congruent to segment JG, that's a side, and angle E is congruent to angle G, that's an angle, and we've got segment EF is congruent to segment GH, that's a side. So triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JGH by side, angle, side. I got a real short two-column proof for you, proving triangles congruent. We're given that L is parallel to M, so we've got L and M, and we see our parallel marks right here, don't we? We also given that segment EG right here is congruent to segment HF down here. We need to prove that triangle EGF, this one, is congruent to triangle HFG, this one. We make our statement and reasons columns, and our first statement is that segment EG is congruent to segment HF. That was given. We also state for number two that L is parallel to M. That was given. Our third one is angle EGF is congruent to angle HFG because of the alternate interior angles theorem. So it's saying that this angle here is congruent to this angle here because of alternate interior angles theorem. So we have parallel lines. We can look at GF as a transversal. So those would be alternate interior angles, wouldn't they? So number four is FG is congruent to GF. So it's saying GF that's used for this triangle is congruent to FG that's used for this triangle. That's the reflexive property of congruence, which means we've got number five, triangle EGF is congruent to triangle HFG, and that's side, angle, side from steps one, three, and four. We have a side, an angle, and a side. See? All right? So be careful because the order of the letters in a congruence statement is very important. You don't want to say side, side, angle. That's completely different than SAS, okay? We're going to talk about angle, side, angle in the next lesson, ASA congruence. And we're going to construct triangles using ASA. That's 4.6a. I hope you're okay. I hope you're able to follow along with all of these videos. They're all in order from the beginning of the school year till the end. So it's the entire geometry course, all right? So hit the like button, and I'll see you next time. Bye.